Yeah, we're entering the fourth great industrial revolution. You know, throughout human history, we lived in poverty and disease. The average life expectancy was 30 years of age for most of human existence. Life was a bitch. <laughs> but then something uh, happened. Uh, did he say bitch? Right? Was he good? How he he, he, I like the way he said it. He kind of turned me on. I was like, who are you talking to? And that's a scientific term, right? Yeah, scientific okay. term. But 300 years ago, something happened. We physicists worked out steam power, thermodynamics, which gave us the automobile, which gave us the train, gave us sewing factories, the Industrial Revolution. Then we physicists worked out electricity and magnetism. That gave us the light bulb. It gave us generators. It gave us power plants. Third, we physicists worked out the transistor. And that gave us the computer revolution. And now we are entering the fourth great era of scientific innovation and wealth generation, artificial intelligence and quantum computers. All right, well, let's we, let got to start like square one. R remind us all about quantum physics. What is it? Many different communities have co-opted quantum speak. I don't know why, because I'm pretty sure they haven't ever had a class in quantum physics. You're talking about the entire James Bond franchise, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know the whole, whole branches of society have done this. So just catch us up on quantum physics right here. Well, the common sense world around us that we live and play with is Newtonian mechanics. Large objects that bump against other large objects, planets, meteors, comets, rocks, cannonballs, all governed by Newtonian mechanics. But at the tiny microscopic scale, a new kind of physics emerges. Quantum physics, the physics that makes our rocks and plastics and materials and flesh and blood all different. The thing that makes the world go round is quantum physics. And now we want to use that for computers. Now, a transistor basically has two states. A transistor can be on or it can be off. Two states for a transistor. However, once you go to a quantum transistor, then it can not only be up or down, but anything in between. And how many more states are there in between up and down? Infinite. Meaning that in principle, a computer that uses atoms to calculate is infinitely more powerful than an ordinary computer. That's why all the governments of the world, scientific laboratories are rushing to see who can create the first operational quantum computer that'll change everything. I need a notebook and a pen. Oh, oh no, I, 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 I was going to use this, but... No, I need this. Oh, okay. Because I need to know, what does Pluto Matarnas mean? Well, we're talking about Newtonian physics. Newtonian? Okay. The yeah. world of common sense. The world of cannonballs, you planets, said common comets. Sense? Common sense. We is don't got that here. Come on now. Common <laughs> sense. Yeah, no common sense. <laughs> not this side of the ocean. No, no, yeah. no. The common sense world is Newtonian mechanics, discovered 300 years ago by the great Isaac Newton. But now we're penetrating deeper into the nature of atoms, which are governed by a totally different kind of mechanics, quantum mechanics. So here's the thing. So if this, if quantum computing can be infinitely faster, more powerful than ordinary computing, which otherwise just has two states. Two states. What, where do you see the first wave of this new phenomenon touching our lives? Where? Realize that Silicon Valley will eventually become a rust belt of obsolete technologies, just like the abacus, because of the fact that we're going away from the traditional transistor. A transistor's smallest component may be 50 atoms across. That's huge on the atomic scale. 50 atoms across is the smallest transistor that we can make. We want to make a computer out of one atom. That's an atomic computer, a computer with enormous power that could change world history in the same way that the transistor the same way that the Industrial Revolution changed everything. We're on the precipice of this right now, you're saying. Right now, we have created the first quantum computers just about two years ago. 
That's why it's called quantum supremacy. What? We're now talking about computers. That's the name of your book, Quantum Supremacy. This sounds like you're ready for a fight. <laughs> we about to be fighting robots. No, no fighting robots. We just gonna be obedient to them? No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should focus on quantum equality first. Uh, <laughs> just feels maybe like a kinder way of approaching the problem. Yeah, yeah, how about that? <laughs> Meet <Michio>. you. <laughs> quantum equality, how about that? Uh, no, we're way past equality. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're about a million times past equality. Oh, you're a Republican, I get it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. We've no dealt comment. with that, we've dealt with that. Wait, wait, so... Since so many of us in so many fields use computing, quantum computing infused in all these fields would transform them all, I presume, provided they have questions that require this kind of extra computing power. That's right. We're talking about computer power millions of times greater than what you can get from an ordinary transistor, which is either off or on, off or on. We're talking about millions of times more states than computer power in a quantum computer, which is gonna revolutionize medicine, energy, space travel, transportation, you name it. Everything is gonna be overturned in the same way that the transistor overturned everything after the war. Right now, if I were to look out there, is there anything touched by quantum computing? Not yet, it's not ready yet. It's not ready for prime time. When will it be? Like next week? When this sounds like? Are you still taking investors? That's what we want to know. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, let's yeah. get in. Yeah, I, I missed out on the Bitcoin. <laughs> We've made the first quantum computers just a few years ago. That on specific tasks, specific tasks are millions of times more powerful than a regular computer. Now the nations of the world: China, the United States, Germany, the European Union. All these countries are racing to see who can top that, to make a quantum computer that is general for all kinds of problems, not just one specific problem. Give me an example of a task greatly improved by quantum computer. Because I don't know anyone here who's saying, you know, the, my computer is too slow. I, unless you have a slow internet, I, no one's really complaining. I remember in the old days, computers were slow. I don't, that's not a complaint today. So it's, it's not a complaint, and you want to make my computer infinitely faster. So I don't know what I would do with that infinite extra speed. What you can do with it is solve the secret of life. <laughs> solve the secret of Yeah, energy. lazy. You're lazy, Neil. <laughs> you, ever, you ever heard about using it to solve the secret of life? What is the secret of life? He doesn't know. He's going to solve it. That's what I'm saying. Is it a secret or is it a problem? It, you, oh, solve, interesting. you solve problems, oh. you reveal secrets. Oh. These quantum computers are so powerful that for chemistry, you don't need chemists anymore. We're talking about quantum chemistry done by a computer. Biology, you don't need doctors anymore to create new drugs. The computer will find new drugs. Energy, the computer will find new sources of energy. We're talking about a new industrial medical revolution right before our eyes as we make the transition from transistors to atoms. All right, so we call this a bit. Has, you said transistor, but a more primitive understanding of that is a bit. It's either one or zero. That's right. right? The, the, we live in a binary computing universe. And now you have a quantum bit, which, which you guys have abbreviated to qubit. Which that's is, right. Which, that's cute. I like that. Quantum means how many, right? Explain quantum, just the word. When you look at energy, we think of energy as being continuous, smooth, un and uninterrupted. Quantum means you chop it up, that there are pieces of the quantum. And these pieces of the quantum of energy are called photons. All the universe is based on particles, nothing continuous. So the world of continuous energy has been replaced by quantum physics the physics of particles of energy that interact with other particles of energy.